Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Gopi Janabalava Kirivar Rari Gopi Janabalava Kirivar Rari Gopi Janabalava Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Gopi Janabalava Kirivar Rari Gopi Janabalava Kirivar Rari Gopi Janabalava Kirivar Rari Jasura Nandana Brajana Ranjana Yashura Nandana Brajana Ranjana Jamuna Jiravana Jari Jamuna Jiravana Jamuna Jiravana Jari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Gopi Jana Ballava Kirivare Rari Gopi Jana Ballava Kirivare Rari Gopi Jana Ballava Jasura Nandana Vrajana Ranjana Jasura Nandana Vrajana Ranjana Jamuna Jiravana Jari Jamuna Jiravana Jari Jamuna Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Gopi Jana Vallava Giri Vara Nari Gopi Jana Vallava Gopi Jana Vallava Giri Vara Nari Gopi Jana Vallava Jasura Nandana Vrajana Ranjana Jasura Nandana Vrajana Ranjana Thank you.
श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासुदी गौर भक्तवृंद की श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपी को श्यामा कुन राधा कुन गिरि गोवृदान की ब्रजभूमि वृंदावन धाम की ग्रंथराज श्रीमद भागवत धाम की बोलो श्री श्री कृष्ण बलदाव की रीता है गौ प्रेमानंद अग लड़ी स्तुति समृद्ध अग लड़ी स्तुति समृद्ध अग लड़ी स्तुति समृद्ध Oh, glories, oh, glories, oh, glories to Sri Guru and Gauranga. Glories to you, Sri the Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, chapter number 35, the gopis sing of Krishna, Gopi Geet, hmm? text, oh, somebody is in the wrong place, okay, it's good, <laughs> really, that's all you studied for you today, <laughs> okay. Verse 18 and 19. Manidara, Kvachid, Aganayan, Ga, Malaya, Daita, Ganda, Tulsyaha, Pranayano, Nucharasya, Kadamse, Prashippan Bhujam Agayata Yatra Manidara Kvachit Agayam Ga Malaya Daita Ganda Tusyaha Pranayino Charasya Kadamse Prashipan Bhujam Agayata Yatra Manidara Kvachit Aganayam Ga Malaya Daita Ganda Tulsyaha Pranino Nucharasya Kadamse Prashipan Bhujam Agayata Yatra Manidara Kvachit Aganayam Ga Malaya Daita Ganda Tulasya Pranayino Nucharasya Kadamse Prashipan Bhujam Agayata Yatra
ladies So verse number 18, 19 is Kwanita Venu Rava Van Chita Chitaha Krishnam Avasata Krishna Green Grihinyaha Gunaganar Nam Anugatya Harinyo Gopika Eva Vimukta Grihasha Mani A string of gems Dala Holding, Holding. Quachit. Quachit. Somewhere. Somewhere. Aganayan. Aganayan. Counting. Counting. Gaha. Gaha. The cows. The cows. Malaya. Malaya. With the flower garland. With the flower garland. Daita. 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 Of his beloved. beloved. Ganda. Ganda. Having the fragrance. Tulasya. The, the tulsi flowers. Upon which. Pranayinaha, loving, Anutrasya, of a companion, Kada, at some time, Amse, on the shoulder, Prakshipan, throwing, Bujam, his arm, Agayata, he sang, Yatra, when, Kwanita, vibrated, Benu, of his flute, Rava, by the sound, Vanchita, stolen, Chittaha, their hearts, Krishnam, Krishna, Anavasata, they sat down beside, Krishna, of the black deer, Grihinyaha, the wise, Gunagana, of all transcendental qualities. Arnam, the ocean. Anugatya, approaching. Harinyaha, the does. Gopikaha, the gopis. Iva, just like. Vimukta, having, having given up. Griha, for home and family. Ashaha. Their hopes. Ah, it's interesting word. Griha Asha. <laughs> Translation. Now Krishna is standing somewhere counting his cows on a string of gems. He wears a garland of tulsi flowers that bear the fragrance of his beloved. And he has thrown his arm over the shoulder of an affectionate cowherd boyfriend. As Krishna plays in flute, his flute and sings, the music attracts the black deer's wives who approach that ocean of transcendental qualities and sit down beside him. Just like us cowherd girls, they have given up all hope for happiness in family life. Translation, please repeat. Now Krishna is standing, now Krishna is standing. 
somewhere, somewhere. Counting, his cows. counting his cows on a string of gems. He wears, wears a garland of Tulsi flowers that bear the fragrance of his beloved. And he has thrown his arm over the shoulder of an affectionate cowherd boyfriend. As Krishna plays his flute and sings, the music attracts the black deer's wives who approach that ocean of transcendental qualities and sit down beside him. Just like us cowherd girls, they have given up all hope for happiness in family life. Purport by the servants of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Srila Jivago Swami explains that in the afternoon, Sri Krishna dressed himself in new clothing and went out to call the cows home. Srila Viswanath Chakravarti gives the following information about the transcendental cows of Vrindavan. For each of the four colors of cows, white, red, black, and yellow, there are 25 subdivisions, making a total of 100 colors. Huh? And such qualities as being colored like sandalwood pulp, tilak, speckled, or having a head shaped like a mridanga drum, create eight further groups. To count these 108 groups of cows, distinguished by color and form, Krishna is using a string of 108 jewel bees. Thus, when Krishna calls out, Hey, Davali, the name of a white cow, a whole group of white cows come forward. And when he calls out Hamsi, Chandani, Ganga, Mukta, and so on, 24 other groups of white cows come. The reddish cows are called Aruni, Kumkuma, Saraswati, etc. The blackish ones, Shamala, Dumala, Yamuna, etc. And the yellowish ones, Pita, Pingala, uh, Haritalika, etc. Those in the group with tilak marks on their forehead are called Chitrita, Chitratilaka, Dirgatilaka, and Triyaktilaka. And there are groups known as Mridangamukhi, Mridanga head, Simamukhi, lion head, and so on. Thus, being called by name, the cows come forward, and Krishna, thinking that when it is, that when it is time to bring them back from the forest, none shall be forgotten, is counting on them on his jewel japa beads. Hmm. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gananda Sulakaya Chakshuru Militanjena Tasmai Sri Gadave Nama Sri Chaitanya Manubhistam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Sayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Svapadandiyam Adadana Srinandan Daividam Yache Puna Puna Srima Rupa Padam Bhujo Dulisyam Janma Janmani Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Pancha Kalpatrubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Vevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo I was born in the darkness of ignorance, with my eyes closed shut, but my spiritual master has opened my eyes with the torchlight of transcendental knowledge. Therefore, I offer my humble obeisances at his lotus feet. So actually, I was just all week praying that I would get this verse. <laughs> Because this um, verse is so amazing. Mm -hmm. As you may know, that Nanda Baba, he has nine lakhs of cows. Mm -hmm. 
We know one lakh means nine means one hundred thousand, right? So nine lakhs means almost one megabyte. Hmm? Huh? And those cows here, Srila Bismillah Chakravarti Thakur describes that basically there's four groups. The white cows, the black cows, yellow cows, and uh, reddish cows. And then they're divided into 25 subdivisions. So 4 times 25 is 100. Then there's eight special groups of cows. It's like we're reading here. Uh, uh, Mirdanga Mukhi, with head shaped like a face like a Mirdanga, that I want to see sometime. Hmm? Other is Singamukhi, face like a lion, I'm not sure I want to see. <laughs> and then there's uh, cows with tilak uh, on their forehead, cows with stars on their forehead, speckled cows, cows colored the color of chandan. Uh, and, uh, like this, eight special groups of cows, 108. So Jiva Goswami here says, he explains, Krishna had, just like we have got our uh, 108 Tosi Mala, Krishna has 108 jewel Japa Mala. Hmm? Just imagine, 108 different jewels. Uh, uh, and he plays his flute. We were hearing all about the flute, how uh, the... Uh, even Jamuna becomes, stops and uh, everything else that's moving <laughs> stops. Everything that's, that's generally not moving, the, the rocks begin to melt. Uh, uh, just like one time, as I'm just working in my book about Govardhan, so we're hearing about how uh, Krishna was holding at the hill, he decided to play his flute, and Madhavamanga said, no, 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 no. <laughs> if you play the flute, <laughs> the kid will melt, <laughs> and we'll get stuck in here. <laughs> so those things that are tarala, like liquid, like water, they become, sto they become hard like stone, and those that are stone, they become like water. <laughs> so he plays his flute, especially in the afternoon. Hmm? This particular pastime is talking about the afternoon. Because that time of the day when we do that 4.30 RT, uh, we know that as uh, go duli. Go duli, meaning go is cow. We know, you may know, most of you know, duli means dust. Hmm? Because that t that's the time, that time we're doing that 4.30 RT. Then the cows will come home and they'll kick up so much dust and a big cloud will appear. Go duli. And Nanda Baba, he's sitting in Nanda Betak, and he sees that cloud, and he knows, oh, now Lala's coming home. Hmm? Uh -huh. So Krishna plays on his flute, and all the cows come running. Hmm? And then he takes his japa beads, and he touches the nose of the leader of each group, and counts one jewel. Bing, 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 like that. And then when he sees that all the 108 leaders have come, hmm, uh, then he sees if all of the nine lakhs of cows come, because he knows all of their names. Hmm. Just like here it's described that the white cows, they're called Davali. Uh, but in Bridge Basa, we don't like sharp letters like a V, Davali. So we... Hmm, Smooth it into you. So we say doli. Hmm? But Brishvazi, somehow they mix R's and L's around. So they say dori. <laughs> so white cows are dori and chandani. Chandani means moonlight, huh? a moonbeam. Huh? Chandrika moonbeam. Moon, chandani is moonlight. Chandrika is moonbeam. Um, uh, uh, mukta. Mukta means pearl. Uh, hmm? And what else is there? Sweta, just like this famous name in Russia. Sweta, Sweta means white, like, you know, Sweta Dweep. Uh, and then we have the uh, yellowish cows. Pili, Pitambari, Pingala, Gori, like that. And uh, Gange, Ganga's in the yellowish cows. 
Has anybody been to Prayag? Anybody been to Prayag Raj? Then you've seen at the Sangam, you can see Ganga is coming from this side very golden color. And Jamuna is coming very deep color from this side. And at the Sangam you can see, you can actually see the waters mixing. So Ganga, she's golden, so she's in the golden cows. Ganga, Giriraj Suta, all these cows are in the golden cows. Uh, then there's the blackish cows. Hmm? Kali, but I said the Brishbasis, they mix their R's and L's, so we don't say Kali, we say Kari. <laughs> Kari and Shamala, Shamangi, Dumala, uh, uh, all these nice names like that. And Kalindi and Jamune, because we just heard Jamune is coming very deep color. So in the blackish cows, there's Kalindi and Jamune. Uh, then we have the reddish cows. Uh, Lali, Kumkumi, uh, Sinduri, and Aruni, uh, just like sometimes we sing. Udilo Aruna Purava Bhagi. When the eastern sky becomes tinged with red, huh? then Mahaprabhu goes dancing with his associates. Huh? So Aruni and Saraswati. And we don't see Saraswati River anymore. But from Shastra we learn huh? she was flowing in reddish color. Hmm? Huh? As I can't remember, was some sage was meditating on her bank and she just washed the bank out, out from underneath him. So he became very angry and cursed her to become reddish. <laughs> so Saraswati, we don't see her anymore, but she, she's reddish in her flow. So Saraswati is among the reddish cows. And then we have Burdangamukhi and Singamukhi and Tilakani, and we just heard all these nice other names for the cows, with, and Taravali with the star. Huh? Tara, Taravali, uh, and then we have Chandani, color like Chandan, uh, and uh, so all these different, all according to their colors, they have names. So Krishna knows all their names. So if he sees, make sure that all the cows co have come. If they haven't come, uh, then he climbs back up in the Kadamba tree and play, and uh, uh, instead of playing on his flute, he calls those cows by name. Actually, all the cows, they heard Krishna's flute. They all know they're supposed to come. <laughs> but there's some cows that are very clever, not cleverini. <laughs> they know if they don't come, uh, then Krishna will climb in the tree and call them by their very own name with his own lotus mouth. Hmm? Can you imagine Krishna calling your name by his own lotus mouth? O Dharmatma, Vrindavihari, Shruti Kirti, Kadam, not Kadam, this Panchagoda, Gorbhavani, Archana. <laughs> so Krishna calls them by name. And we've seen the cows, her ears are like this. But as soon as Krishna calls her name, whoop, those ears go up like that. To catch all of the nectar. Hmm? And when it comes to the top and overflows, it doesn't overflow from the top. Huh? The overflow comes from here. Huh? And then those cows, hearing Krishna call their name, they come running with their legs stretched out backwards and forwards, and then together, and backwards and forwards, and then together, and milk bag is going ka choom ka choom ka -choom. and the cows are going mm -hmm. <laughs> And they all come running hearing Krishna's flute. Hmm? Uh, so this is very, very wonder. I'm so happy that I got this verse, huh? <laughs> uh, so all the cows come running when they hear Krishna's flute. We're hearing here. And also, it's talking about, uh, it says, also, we see the word Krishna, but Krishna refers to the black deer. 
They hear it specifically mentioned that the, the doves come. As soon as they hear Krishna's flute, they come and uh, uh, sit just beside him. You ever seen a deer sit beside anyone? They run away. Hmm. Just like one time, when I was staying at Brindukun one time, I was sitting on top of the two-story building chanting my japa, and I saw something in the sugar cane moving. And there was a barbed wire fence. And somehow, I thought it was a big dog, and I kept watching and became very still. And then all of a sudden, I saw it was a deer. And she had big ears looking like this. Anybody around? And I was amazed. She jumped right through the barbed wire. You know? If I go through the barbed wire, I get something, you know, my seeker gets stuck, or my kurta gets torn, you know, or my arm gets scratched. She jumped, bloop, so gracefully right through. The, and then she, you know, put her head up and her ears were going all different directions. And she's looking and she ran. And then she came to the road, the gates, and to the road. And she looked up to the road, up down the road, and then boop, 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 she ran off into the fields. Now, now there was just open fields. And, like anything into the trees. Hmm? So deers, they're very frightened. Hmm? Uh, just like the Nilgai, also very difficult to see. Sometimes you'll, on Govardhan Prikham, you'll see the Nilgai. Hmm? But they're very shy. They stay in the sticker forest, very deep in the thicker forest. You, you see one, then boom, they just run. Uh, hmm? As you'll see the... Uh, most of the time you see like golden ones, those are the females. But if you actually see a, a male, he's a deep gray color that the Vrishvazi think is blue. He's not actually a cow, you can see, he's got little horns like an antelope, or some type of antelope, a Neil guy. But they're very shy. But here Krishna is playing his flute, and the cows, the, guy, the deer, uh, they just come and sit with him. Hmm? Uh? And the gopis are saying, oh, uh, just like us, they have given up griya asha. Uh, just like every day we sing, you know, in the, in the Guru, uh, Guru Charana Padma song, you know, asha, asha, this word keeps coming, hope. Uh, griya asha, griha asha. Uh, they've given up all hope of happiness in family life. Hmm. Actually, uh, we're talking about mundane family life. Hmm? Just like Bhakti No Thakur, he's got a very beautiful song, Godruba Bhajana Upadesh. Hmm? And he sings, Yadi Tehi Hari Parasaroja Sutam Braja. What is that? Not COVID. <laughs> Yadi te hari padasa roja sudam rasa pana param ridayam satatam pari ritya griham kali bava mayam baja godruma kanana kunja vidum baja godruma kanana kunja vidum baja godruma kanana kunja vidum the Bidum is another word for the moon. Hmm? Huh? Just like we know Indu, Chandra, Bidum is another name. Baja Godruma Kanana. Kanana we know means forest. Just like we had our very dear Gabra, uh, friend, Kadamba Kanana Maharaj. Kanana means forest. Huh? Baja Godruma Kanana Kunja Bidum. Just worship that golden moon of the kunjas of the forest of Godrum. Hmm? And he says, Yadi tehi hari pada saroja sudam. Saroja. Saroja means the lotus flower. Because he's saroja. Saro means sarovar, like kusum sarovar. And ja, you know, janmastami, who's born from the water, that is a lotus flower. Hmm? Uh, uh, if you want to, uh, uh, Relish the, the lotus feet, Hari Pada, Saroja Sudam, that a lo, lotus like nectar of the feet of Hari. Yadi Tehi, Yadi means if. Yadi Tehi, Hari Pada, Saroja Sudam. Sudam means nectar. 
Vrilaya Satatam, in your heart, constantly in your heart. What, then what does Bhakti even know? Advise? Parirutya griham kalibhava mayam. He said, You just give up this uh, householder life that is full of kalibhav. And worship that golden moon of the forest of Godru. Now we have to listen to this very carefully. Because according to the rules of grammar, if he would have said Kalibhav, uh, uh, if he would have said, which is full of Kalibhav, then it would mean uh, something else. But it says, Pariritya Griham, give up that householder life. That is full of Kalibhav, that particular one. He said, which, then it says, you know, that Grihastha life is full of Kalibhav. But he says, that particular Griha, that married life that is full of Kalibhav, you give that up. Just like there was one devotee of uh, Lord Chaitanya, actually his name became Chaitanya Das, he was the father of uh, Srivas. And he lived north of, in North Bengal, but he kept hearing the sadhus would come through and they were chanting the glories of this Nimai and Navadweep. Uh, so he decided to go. On the way, he passed through Katwa. He got to Katwa the very day that Nimai was taking sannyas. Hmm? He got there the very day that Nimai was taking sannyas. Hmm? Huh? And he went to that place. Huh? He saw the people just like if you go to Amiya Nimai Mandir, Mahaprabhu Mandir in Gopinath Bazaar, if you know where that is. If you go there just above the altar, beautiful painting, such catharsis in this painting. Everyone's lamenting. Even the barber, he's got his uh, blade, but he can't move. And everyone's crying, and everyone's, they're all twisted, like, ah, you know. And Mahaprabhu just, um, Nimai forced him. And somehow or other, against his will, he shaved up Nimai. He threw that blade into the Ganga, and he vowed never to shave another person in his life. He became a mitaiwala, <laughs> sweet maker. <laughs> And, uh, of course, they say that Keshav Bharati gave sannyas to Mahaprabhu. But actually, Mahaprabhu gave, Dimai gave sannyas to Keshav Bharati. Hmm? Because, Nimai asked him, are you going to give, he said to Keshav Bharati in his ear, are you going to give this mantra? And he spoke the, the sannyas mantra that all our sannyasis uh, teach. It's from the verse about the Avanti Brahman, you know. Brahman from Avantipur, which is Ujjain, where we have now our dear departed God brother Bhakti Chu has made beautiful white marble temple of Madan Mohan there. Uh, so he chanted that mantra in, the, in Keshav Bharati's ear, and Keshav, ah, this is nice, and he uh, gave that mantra back to Mahaprabhu. So Mahaprabhu actually initiated him in, in Sanyat, <laughs> not that Keshav Bharati gave him Sanyat. Uh, uh, and Keshav Bharati gave him the name. Krishna Chaitanya. And as soon as Chaitanya Das heard this name, he just became overwhelmed in ecstasy. And he just began to sh shout at the top of his lung, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. He said, now Nimai is no longer in Navadweep. He, he decided to go home. And he went along the path, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. He got home, he entered the house, he began to roll on the floor. Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. His wife came and she saw her husband like this. She grabbed his lotus feet and she also began to chant. Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Their son, little son came, he saw his mother and father like that. He grabbed all their feet and he began to sing. Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. So if your house, householder life is like that, no need to give it up. <laughs> but that Paritya Griham Kali Bhava Maya. But if you want to give up that householder life that is full of Kali Bhav, that is all right. But if your householder life is fully Krishna conscious, no need to uh, uh, give up this householder life. Hmm? Uh, Griha Asha, give up hope, finding happiness. You won't find happiness in house early. It evaporates very quickly. Hmm? 
that ping, 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 ping in the heart goes away very quickly. <laughs> they say, love is blind, but marriage gives you back your eyesight. <laughs> 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 so real happiness com is coming with the whole family and seeing the beautiful, oh, Gornitai is so beautiful, blue and white today. Krishna Balaram and Radha Shamsun are extraordinarily beautiful. Huh? You come with your family and see the deities, you dance and sing, you hear the nice Bhagavatam class, uh, you distribute some books or uh, somehow you do some service. Just like there was one very poor fellow and he saw the rich people were coming, they're giving nice dresses for the deities. Somebody gave golden crown for the deities. Somebody gave nice silver flute for the deities. Hmm? And he was feeling sad. He said, I'm poor, I don't have anything. What can I give for the Lord? So he went to one sadhu and he explained his problem to that sadhu. Because in India, everybody thinks sadhu means jadu. Yeah? <laughs> jadu means magic. Sadhu will do some. Pocus, pocus, boom! <laughs> all, our me all our medical problems, all our financial problems. <laughs> no, sadhu is meant to solve this material problem. <laughs> Smash your false ego. <laughs> uh, so he went to the sadhu. The sadhu said, all right, you cut off your left hand, I'll give you one lakh of rupees. <gasps> What'd you say, Maharaj? He said, all right, I'll give you two lakhs. <gasps> What'd you say, Maharaj? Three lakhs. <gasps> Maharaj, four lakhs, <gasps> five lakhs. <gasps> he said, even for five lakh rupees, you won't give this left hand and you've got two hands. <laughs> How much wealth do you have? You go to the temple, grab the broom and sweep the floor. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so somehow or other you find out some nice service for Krishna Balaram. People like to come to Vrindavan because in the living India is cheap and this and that, but you must get some service with Krishna Balaram. Hmm? And as we're in our list of goes, we're telling there's so many people coming, we have so many opportunities to serve and distribute books and distribute prasadam. And so many, just find some service for Krishna Balaram somehow or another. Hmm? Now you can't say, I don't have anything. That poor man, he wasn't ready to give up his left hand for five lakhs, and we know right hand is more valuable, he's got two hands. Huh? Uh, you do something for Krishna Balaram, then you will stay here peacefully under their lotus feet. Uh, or if you have the facility somehow, uh, we, we have this great privilege of staying here, we have to go and s spread the news about Krishna Balaram mm -hmm. uh, all over the world. Prabhupada, uh, he brought the whole world to Vrindavan, now it's our duty to uh, take Vrindavan to the whole world. Mm -hmm. So this week also we were hearing all about how the gopis were criticizing that flute. It's just a piece of dry bamboo. How did he get the nectar of Krishna? That's ours. How did, what did he do? What did this flute do? He's just a little bamboo. Huh? So one time, Radha Govind Maharaj, His Holiness got Radha Govind Maharaj was giving class and he was telling that Surdas, he's got the answer. And unfortunately, I don't know the verse. It's in beautiful ancient Brijbasa language. But the purport is this, that the flute is talking. You want to know what I did? You want to know what I did? Huh? First, uh, I left my family and everything and I stood on the side of the river on one foot. Hmm? And I didn't even eat anything. Through that foot, I drank water, that's all. Huh? You want to know what I did? Are you ready to do that? Huh? <laughs> you want to know what I did? I stood there on that one foot, taking only water through my foot. Hmm? Huh? Then somebody came with a, a chopper and chopped off even that foot. Hmm? And then he chopped off all of my limbs. You want to know what I did? You ready? Huh? Huh? Then he took this poker, uh, this iron, red hot iron poker, and burned holes all through my body. Hmm? Huh? And he set me in an oven to, to heat up and dry out. Huh? Are you ready? You want to know what I did? You know what stairs I did? Are you ready? Huh? <laughs> uh, 
He said, so if, if you want to do those austerities, then you can also get Krishna, the, the nectar of Krishna's <laughs> lips. Because huh? the gopis were saying that a couple of days before, you know, that's our property. <laughs> so he gives the answer that, what did I do? <laughs> so anyway, we're just uh, Sudha bathing in the ocean of nectar. Now somehow we got this 10th canto and Jiva Goswami and Biswanath Chakravarti Thakur uh, are just uh, milking all the wonderful nectar from this 10th uh, canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. So maybe anybody has any questions or some comments or something else they'd like to add? Or <laughs> so in previous ages, yogis and mystics would meditate 10,000, 50,000, 60,000 years just to achieve some level of perfection. And it seems like Lord Chaitanya is just pouring out the nectar for the highest purification. It's such a simple process. The Lord's always kind, so why, why is it that... You know, like, why do we have so much difficulties? Yeah. Well, that... Jiva Goswami describes in his uh, Bhakti Sandar, one of the, the Satsandars is Bhakti Sandar. He describes that Bhakti is supremely independent and supremely powerful and extremely easy. And he gives some example from the Shastra that there, in Khandapuran, there was a little sparrow. We all know the sparrow. I've seen them all the way from Kanyakumari to the Himalayas. Everywhere I've been in the world, they have sparrows. Mm -hmm. And this little sparrow was sitting outside a Vishnu temple. And suddenly a hawk came. Now we know hawks, they like to eat sparrows, small birds. So that hawk began to chase that sparrow around the Vishnu temple. And he was flying around and around, he caught him and killed him. But because he was doing circumambulation of a Vishnu temple, he doesn't even know. He's a bird, how does he know this Vishnu temple, he's circumambulating? Didn't even know anything. Completely a gyan. Huh? But because he was doing circumambulating in Vishnu temple, immediately Baikunta airplane came and took him back to Baikunt. So then the question is, why are we feeling so much trouble? He said, bhakti is easy. He says, the hard part is avoiding aparads. And then Jiva Goswami quotes the uh, Skanda Puran for the six types of Vaishnava aparad. We know the das nam aparad, huh? every day we recite. Huh? But here's the six Vaishnava uh, Paras. Hanti Nandi Vai Dvaishti Vaishnava Nabi Nandati Grudyanti Yadi No Harsham Darshanam Patata Nishat. Hanti, we know Hanyate Mahanyamane Sari, to do harm to a Vaishnava. Hmm? Nindanti, oh, that's our favorite. We just love. Did you hear that? With this guy. <laughs> I saw it all over the internet. <laughs> we just love that. Our ears perk up. Bhagavatam class become. <laughs> but soon somebody says, Oh, did you hear what someone said? Oh, no, really? Handi nindanti vai dveshti dvesha. We know Raga dvesha. Dvesha means to be envious of Vaishnava. Oh, everyone thinks he's a big Vaishnava. Actually, he's a nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Handi nindanti vai dveshti Vaishnav ana abhinandati Abhinandan means to welcome. If a Vaishnav comes and we don't give a proper welcome to him, that is also aparad. Huh? Huh? Even I, my older god brothers told me when I was a young devotee, that Prabhupada said, if you're doing the puja and a Vaishnav comes, that you should immediately uh, pay attention to him. You should offer him some welcome. He says, Vaishnava, anabhinandati. If you don't give proper welcome to a Vaishnava. Hmm? Krudyante. Now we all know the word uh, crowed, but somehow Sanskrit is funny. When it, change, when it turns into a verb, the O becomes a U, so it becomes krudyante. To become angry with a Vaishnava. Hanti nananti vaidvesti Vaishnava, anabhinandati. Krudyanti yadi no harsham darshanam. Harsh means to feel very happy in the heart. Huh? And darshana, we know, to see. So if we see a Vaishnava and we don't feel happy in the heart, that is also offense. 
Just let me think, oh, here comes Fulana Dasi. Oh, here comes Fulana Das. <laughs> and now you wonder why you have so much trouble, huh? <laughs> Even up to that point, just not to feel happy. I mean, Vaishnavas are so rare in this world. Hmm? I remember one time I flew all around the world. I didn't, I saw so many people, so, you know, eating so many horrible things with so many, the hair in all funny ways and green and yellow and so, <laughs> I saw so many faces and people. I never saw any Vaishnava. But I had planned my trip to go to, to Rathiyatra in Puri. So I landed in Delhi. I already had a reservation on the plane to go to Bhuvaneswar. So I got on the plane and I sat down, I was chanting. Also I looked up. Uh, and I saw this Vaishnava. I felt so happy. I said, oh, he's from Mauritius. That's uh, Naveen Krishna. Uh, uh, he was just a skinny little brahmachari then. Uh, I just saw him now. He's, I guess I'm, I can't remember where he is now, Dallas, Texas or something. But he's huge. <laughs> just a skinny little brahmachari with a big smile. And I said, wow. You know? And then I looked at behind him was Naveen Swami. <laughs> I felt so happy, you know, I flew all over the world, I didn't see any Vaishnava anywhere, any, you know, it's just horrible, it's Kali Yuga out there, you know. <laughs> I saw a Vaishnava, I felt so happy. <laughs> so these are the six Vaishnava Aparas. He said, that's the hard part, Bhakti is easy, but to avoid the, the Vaishnava Aparas, uh, because cause we, we know that song, was it Nartam Dasa's song that, uh, uh, what is it? Somehow or other, that if we commit offense to the holy name, to the uh, the Lord, Hari Stani Aparade, Tare Hari Nam. That just by taking Hari Nam, we'll cross over those offenses. But Tomastani, he's talking to the Vaishnav. Tomastani Aparade, Nahi Paritran. We know this word from Bhagavad Gita. Paritanaya Sar, no Paritanaya for you. <laughs> And, and Madhuri Karamani, Viswanath Chakravarti Thakur says, if you commit offense to a Vaishnava, you can't think, oh, I'll just chant the holy name. It says that the chanting of the holy name can, ma can smash to smithereens so many millions of sinful activities. He says, no, it will not do that. Then, you're not, then you're nam, your kirtan will become uh, namaparad. Hmm. You have to go to that Vaishnava and beg him uh, for forgiveness. Hmm. Any way, anyhow, you have to beg his forgiveness. If somehow you created such offense, he doesn't forgive you. But generally, Vaishnavas are very merciful. Uh, somehow he won't forgive you. Then as a last resort, thinking that, oh, I'm going to hell. You just sit and chant the holy name with desperation that I have no other shelter. Hmm? But first, you have to beg forgiveness or serve that Vaishnava somehow or another. You have to make him happy somehow or another. Uh, so our bhakti is very easy, and Mahaprabhu has made it very easy. And still, who was it the other day? Was it Nishringanand? He was telling, you know, you think that, who was that I was telling? You think that, I don't know, I don't know, you're going to, people were doing, as Prabhuji said, Pandagoda said, 60,000 years of austerities. And we're thinking that, we're going to get uh, back to Godhead. Huh? It's been made very easy, but take advantage. Uh, the, Prabhupada told us that, you know, I used to hear that so much when I was a young devotee, that Krishna dances on your tongue. Uh, I don't hear so much anymore, but we're always told that when you're chanting Java, Krishna is dancing on your tongue. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to chant like that, just like there's one mm -hmm, in Murari Gupta's Karacha notebooks that talks about how Mahaprabhu went to uh, chief temple in South India somewhere on his Dakshin Bharat tour. And he spontaneously composed a Shivastakam. And one of my favorite verses in that Shivastakam is, uh, Sri Rama Govinda Makunda Sodi Si Krishna Narayana Vasudeva Ityadi Nama Amrita Panamata Bringadi Payakila Dukahantre he says, Sri Ra there's so many names, Sri Rama Govinda Makunda Sodi Si Krishna Narayana Vasudeva Ityadi, in Sanskrit Adi means etc. Uh, all these names and, and others, uh, Namamrita, Ityadi Namamrita, 
that nectar of those names, uh, you have to uh, panamata, you have to become absorbed in hearing the nectar of those names. How? Bringadipa, like the king of the bumblebees. The bumblebee, he especially likes in the lotus flower, there's a special type of nectar called makarand. Hmm? And the bees, they love that nectar so much. They go inside the lotus flower and they're drinking that nectar. And those who've been on Prakamudhi Me, you know the lotus flowers in the night, they close. If he doesn't get out, he's going to suffocate and die. But he just goes on drinking that nectar, that makaran. In the morning, the lotus flower opens when the sun comes up and dead bee is there. So we have to chant the holy name like that, that even death will come in front of us. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. And we step on his head and go on. <laughs> So somebody's holding his hand back here. Where's our bhakta mic? <laughs> Hello. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Uh, as we, from today's lessons, I just know about the importance of cow. Yes. Uh, how the Lord Krishna loved his cows and the calling other names and like that. And we are staying in India. So, today the condition of cow in India is very, very poor. Yes. yes sir. Uh, there is some, somewhere pain in the heart when I see uh, the condition of cow in other cities and other states. Mm. So, what is the peaceful manner to uh, making an environment just like a Vrindavan? The whole over the world. How do I do with this? How do you? How do I do? What do you do? All right. I will just well, we have, we have 400, uh, I can't say cows, but cows, calves, and bulls also. Because most, you go, most Koshalas, you go, you see uh, cows. You won't see any bulls. But they're just as important as the cow. Uh, and this tractor, he's the. Um, the incarnation of Avristasura. Uh, because uh, uh, <laughs> now that we have tractor, I lived in Brindakun, you know, where there's a full moon night in the summer, like, you know, it was, like last week it was 40 degrees, you know, then all night long you can't sleep because they're running their big tractors, you know. And you don't see any bulls. Hmm? Where are all those bulls? I don't want to say in the front of the Lordships where those bulls are going. But we have 400 animals, very happy bulls and cows and calves. So you can go to the Goshala and you can feed cow ladus to the, we have nice ladus with busha and gur, and you can give cow ladus to the cows, you can brush the cows, uh, you can give some donation for the cows. Uh, somehow, whether we're doing our little part, there's so many other Goshalas, hmm? some of them also taking care of bulls, but mostly I've seen just cows. So somehow or other you serve the cows do your part. Hmm? Like it was that Gandhi said, if you want to be the change that you want to see in the world, make that change in yourself first. So you do what you can. We can't change the whole world, but at least we can change ourselves. Okay? <laughs> so you go, to just, you just go out this gate number three, you follow the signs to the Gosha, that's just two minute walk. And the weather is very nice these days. <laughs> and see the happy cows. <laughs> Or you go to a jai farm, we have lots of cows there also. <laughs> and bulls. <laughs> Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you for a wonderful class. My question is on forgiveness, that um, sometimes people might hurt us in our hearts so much that um, on a surface level we will forgive, but we can never forget. And then because we can never forget, we don't actually forgive. Hmm. So how do we develop this, this, this attitude of like rationalism, merciful, when we are struggling to forgive? We might say, okay, it's all right, but then internally we're still a little bit We stuck. just have to, we have to keep trying, that's all. Just keep trying. I know it's hard. Uh, if somebody's really offended, it's very hard. But by forgiveness is the ornament of the Vaishnava. Hmm? In fact, we, 
uh, our dear God brother Mukunda Dutti gave this nice class at Karuna, compassion, almost like forgiveness. He says one of the shaktis, one of the energies of the Lord is Karuna. Hmm? So anyway, we just beg the Lord to give us some of that shakti and just keep trying. That's the main thing is to keep trying. Uh, unfortunately, it's internet age. We want to just click on the link. Bing! Oh, forgiveness. Ah, no link to click. You have to work on yourself. Hmm? Uh, just like uh, when I was a kid, I used to cut up all of my father's uh, uh, National Geographics for my school projects. Because once I grew up, I realized what, what it must have, how he must have felt. <laughs> but at least he just let me go because I was learning something. But I saw one time, there's an article, because in the old days, uh, it was how they were using the elephants in India. And they used them in the train yards. And they were pushing the train cars. They were loading big logs onto the train cars. And so many things they used to do. Now we don't see anymore. But anyway, it used to be like that, this whole article. And they told how they trained them. They get a small elephant, and they put a big stake into the ground. Kut. Huh? And they tie a rope around his leg, and he runs around and around and around till it becomes bloody. And then he realizes that once this thing's on my wrist, I can't go and do anything about it. So he just sits there. Now he's loading logs onto the train car, he's pushing the train car, and they put a little tiny chain, a little, a little quit into the ground, a little stake into the ground, put the chain, and he just stands there. Sometimes there's a fire, and suddenly he becomes frightened. He breaks that chain and runs away. Huh? Just like us also, we become very slack in our budget and slack in everything. All of a sudden a heart attack comes, like, <gasps> I better get serious, headache, headache. <laughs> Don't wait for the heart attack. Try now. As long as you're chanting, as long as you're trying, you're growing in Krishna consciousness. One day you'll stake, take that stake of lust or greed or uh, unforgiveness and just pull it out of the ground and throw it far away. But keep trying. <laughs> Hare Krishna. So anyways. <laughs> Thank you. So... We can all fall down at the very soft and wonderful lotus feet of that great personality who brought us all of this wonderful nectar. Srila Prabhupada Ki! Yeah.